I had the idea to create a musical around ABBA's songs. I was cheated by you, and I think you know when. I felt that their music was very theatrical, as if they had written a musical already. Look at me now, will I ever learn? I thought it would make a great movie if you could capture the uh, tone of what it did live on stage. Even while we were making the stage show, we imagined what it might be like as a film. Many people, after we opened in London and on Broadway, express interest in making a film. But we wanted to continue opening the shows, and I wanted to protect Mamma Mia, and so I was never going to part with the film rights as such. I think about one and a half years ago or so, we said, yeah, maybe it's time, you know. Let's do it. Well, this shouldn't be too difficult, should it? I mean, I've written it once. I know how the plot goes. I feel like there's a part of me missing. And when I meet my dad, it will all fall into place. Cut! The original dynamos were Judy Kramer, Katherine Johnson, and Philip Lloyd. We felt that it was really important to keep that trio together because they were the keepers of the flame of Mamma Mia! The Stage Show. The fact that it's created by three women makes a difference in every single aspect of the piece. For instance, a woman my age has three potential fathers for her child. Colin Firth, Stellan Skarsgård, and <laughs> Pierce Brosnan. So right away, the thing is like a complete fantasy, you know? If I had a little money, it's a rich man's world. And th this film is uh, written, produced, and directed, and designed by women which means that we three men, we are uh, the bimbos in the film. We've got a hen party. Women only. Wait till they get a load of us in our little sparkly suits. My God. Being a man on this production makes you understand how women usually feel. <laughs> get your totally chin objectified. <laughs> It could seem like a chick flick, except I can assure you that the guys on this movie say this is the most fun they've ever had. Yeah. Try not to hog the shot, guys. <laughs> We're having a bloody great time. This is one of the best jobs ever. When you go, when you go, try, how can I carry on? I think I should have done musicals sooner in life, but there's still time. <laughs> How'd it go on your side? Uh, it was, My side was a little rocky. It was a bit rocky for me there, woman. <laughs> it was a wee bit rocky. This is probably the most thoroughly brought to by women, you know, package that I've, I've ever been involved with. Now, some of that was unnecessary. <laughs> I, I mean, I know and I feel the songs are good. But without this intelligent, witty way that they're put together, and those three gals, you know, Catherine and Philida and Judy, I mean, this would not have happened. You can dance, you can dance, and we used to joke that those characters were based on ourselves. This is how I think of it. Judy's Tanya, and Phyllis and I always have a slight thing about Donna and Rosie. I think we started off where Phyllis wanted to be Rosie, and I kind of was Donna because of the whole sort of being the mother kind of thing. I think it's slightly unfair that I always get, you know, the high maintenance one just because I buy a lot of clothes, but I think there is a little of Catherine, Phyllis, and I in, in Donna, Tanya, and but we've started to swap around a bit over the years because now Phyllida's got a bit more high maintenance than she used to be. In fact, we've all become more high maintenance <laughs> and less intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> Works for us. <laughs> We're doing all right on it, though. <laughs>